Hello, welcome to the Maris Consulting series of guests at Maris Consulting. In fact, we're not at Maris Consulting at all today. We're in, we're in Berlin for the TOC ICO annual conference. And it's allowed me to, to meet lots of people. And at last, to meet Robert Bolton, who I uh, have been hearing about incessantly for, for a year now, because uh, he's just published a book with Ian Heftingstall, who I know well, and I've spoken to. You'll see other videos on our channel about that. And um, I want him to talk about you know, what led to, to this book, because the, uh, it, it emerged out of nowhere and, and appeared sort of more or less immediately, simply because uh, Robert met Ian in 2015. And Correct. What happened? Well, Ian and I met, and, and we got on very well. Um, Ian's a particularly strong rugby guy and a very detailed rugby guy for those people that understand rugby union. He's very passionate and very good and is a very strong English supporter and he knew as an Australian I would get that. But he's also very technically and very passionate about building and construction and the issues with the construction industry. And on a flight from um, Dallas uh, in Washington back to Dubai um, and on I went on a little bit further to Singapore, we just discussed over... You know, meals and wines about you know, some of the things in the industry and Ian was probing me because I've been in, involved in Critical Chain and TSC for um, a lot, about 10 or 15 years more than he had. Um, why wasn't um, um, Critical Chain in the construction business? Mm -hmm. and, and we just talked that through in a lot of detail um, and Ian very well and very very uh, politely, Dorothy Dix asked me a question. He said, but you know, you're from an Australian, you know, you're the leader of the project Australians in the Australian construction and, and infrastructure industry are really the world leaders in adopting and the adoption rate of um, the project alliancing um, procurement method for means of managing complex, big, large infrastructure projects. And he was right. And, and he knew that I knew it and we got more and more detail into it. And so the book kicked off from there and the idea was we built on our three pillars of um, you need a collaborative team, you need the ability for technical, smart engineering people to, who want to build good projects, good infrastructure mm -hmm. for their clients to work together in a collaborative framework and that requires teamwork. But the uh, prerequisite for that is to have a, a commercial arrangement where people can do that. And the Project Alliance, which was really developed out of the UK, but Australia, pretty much from the Sydney Olympics, 98 to 99, 2000, adopted it. Mm -hmm. And that method as a project procurement mm -hmm. uh, has been very successfully applied in Australia. Um, the bottom line number that um, um, we found out from a, an Australian report was it's basically $28 billion worth of projects were built between um, Queensland, New South Wales and Victoria with virtually zero um, litigation or, or um, yeah. merits. Which yeah. is most unusual. Doing, doing it in, the, in this way, uh, blending in uh, project alliancing and critical chain brings many different uh, business ex uh, advantages that you describe in your book. But I know that you're passionate about one other thing, about how it liberates innovation or it enables uh, innovation. It allows the um, engineers and the um, project managers to be able to think about how can we innovate, how can we make the project better. From a client perspective, will we will it meet the specifications or better? Mm -hmm. Will we meet their needs? But also you've got more time and ability to do it. Uh, it takes the project manager's role with adding uh, critical chain as a pillar. Yeah. It takes the project manager away from just being a firefighter to being more proactive and doing all the things we know what critical chain can do and be proactively more managing towards um, the client and making the project clients better. One of the things Ian correctly says, in the 80s and 90s, that was the way projects were managed. That's the intuition that was already out there. Mm -hmm. What has occurred in, in, in both our views is the complexity is basically more and more data not about how do we manage the complexity, how do we manage the task, how do we manage mm. the time differently. But the innovation um, is not occurring in, in the infrastructure and, the pro and, and um, capital projects like it is in other sectors. And I think this is one of the reasons why it's the commercials is the normal fixed price lump sum type of contracting arrangement is adversarial. 
And so the technical people who can make the difference do not have the ability to actually collaborate. And if they can't collaborate, no. they can't innovate. We see that uh, in a lot of areas. I, 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 I'd add the, the following thing. So because it's so hard just to finish, operationally speaking, the project, one doesn't have time to, to stand back and, and do some innovation and stuff. We were also seeing, and I've seen it in, in aeroplanes and many other areas, and uh, another thing we see is when, imagine a, a company outside of uh, construction and capex projects, but for instance developing aeroplanes or any other kind of product, they have so much trouble meeting their, their, their commitments of, of, uh, for day-to-day -day business. They don't have any time left to stand back and do the research and develop new projects or try things and test things. And so you're right, the, the innovation and, and, uh, uh, is just getting stifled by day-to-day -day business. And, and I was very lucky in my early career, and I, I agree with that view entirely. And, and as a 25-year-old, I, I can remember a particular um, highway project where... I was the project engineer at the time, and the project manager said, no, my role as a project manager is to sit in the office and twiddle the thumbs. And I said to my project manager, I said, Warren, what did you mean by that? And what he was really saying, if I'm there twiddling my thumbs, I'm thinking ahead, I'm thinking how I'm innovative, I'm working out my team, which was you know, seven or eight staff and about 50 people on a 25-kilometre mm. um, yeah, uh, um, highway project, yeah. how to work together. Yeah. So yeah, that's and and that doesn't happen anymore. Mm. And and I think you know, the book is designed. It's really designed for people my, our age. Sorry, Philip. <laughs> um, to look at hey, this is a way of how we did projects back in the eighties and nineties, where our intuition is. In the book, there's a lot of detail. It's, it's designed for a quick read, two days, you know, or two day, one or two days to read. Get the basics know where to look to find out a little bit more detail on it. But, yeah, get back to projects where the project managers, who are really a senior uh, responsible person in, in a business, and in particular in a project, can you know, sit back, relax, twiddle their thumbs and think ahead. Excellent. OK, well, I, I, I've read the book. I, in fact, I've read the book now three times. It's so good. So uh, I really recommend it. And thank you very much, Robert. Thanks, Philip, and thanks for this.